It's hard to believe, but back during Pokemon's early days, Onyx actually used to be one of the franchise's most iconic and popular Pokemon. As Brock's Ace, it serves as a memorable first boss fight for all players who are just starting out in the game, and gets impressive appearances in the anime, where it gets to showcase its awesome size and power, and occasionally act as a staircase. But nowadays, it's known more for... well... I was gonna say give the Quick Claw to Mewtwo is because uh, if you could proc Quick Claw and then have the flinch. What did I say, Brayden? What did I say? What the fuck? What did I say? I thought it was sturdy. Jesus Christ. Online, Onyx is a truly terrible Pokemon. If we're looking at just Gen 1, then I'd say it's the worst Pokemon. Ah. <laughs> and it's hard not to see why. With stats like these, Onyx is legitimately useless to any player and is arguably one of the worst Pokemon you could use in any game. It's actually quite a bit of a tragedy seeing such a cool Pokemon be reduced to such absolute trash. Some people even wonder if this was a mistake or a cruel joke on Game Freak's part and are confused about why it's so bad. In truth, Onyx's terrible performance is 100% intentional game design, intended to fulfill a specific purpose, which it does so with such flying colors that most players don't even realize it. From my personal perspective as a game designer, Onyx is arguably one of the greatest Pokemon ever designed, and this video is here to explain why. See, to understand the genius of Onyx's design, we need to look at it from a slightly different perspective. Instead of looking at it from the perspective of a modern-day Pokemon veteran, we need to shift our perspective back in time a little bit. So, imagine this. The year is 1996, and you, a young 10-year-old child, have just bought Pokemon Red or Blue the first ever Pokemon game in history. Now, remember that Pokemon is ultimately a JRPG and is loaded with complex mechanics. These days, mechanics such as the type system, levels and stats, physical and special attacks, same type attack bonus and such are much more easily understood due to the years of accumulated player experience and extensive online resources such as Cerebi, Bulbapedia and various other content creators. But back then, none of these existed kids needed to learn the game's mechanics on their own, entirely unassisted. The game's designers thus couldn't take for granted that certain mechanics would be intuitively understood, and needed to design the game in such a way that kids would learn enough of the game's mechanics to complete it. This is where Onyx comes in. Those stats aren't a cruel joke by the developers. Each value was deliberately chosen for it to perform a specific job, to teach the player about Pokemon's mechanics. The same qualities which make it so worthless as a playable Pokemon are also what make it perfectly designed to be the game's first ever boss. So, you've started the game and have been playing for a good while, making it through Viridian Forest and reaching Pewter City. During this time, all you've been fighting with and against are birds, bugs, and varying types of small mammals. Notably, all of these tend to have normal type moves, comprising the majority of their early movesets. This decision was likely made as a way to help ease players into the otherwise fairly complex type advantage system. By having all moves be normal, all Pokemon within the early game would hit each other neutrally, which in turn means that all players can focus more on learning the game's other mechanics, such as capturing, battling, or simply just getting out of your own house. By having every move be normal, the player effectively doesn't have to think about type advantages at this early stage of the game. So now, Brock and Onyx, being the first boss of the franchise, have an important task entrusted to them by the game's designers, to forcibly teach the player about these mechanics. Brock is your first encounter with the rock type, which was designed as the intended physical tank type of the game, due to it resisting normal, which comprises the majority of moves within the game. Up until now, the vast majority of moves you have come across deal neutral damage to their targets, but Rock is the first time you will ever encounter the phrase, it's not very effective. This is why Brock's first Pokemon is Geodude, as it represents the fundamental core archetype of the majority of Rock Pokemon. High defense and attack, and low specials and speed. This serves as your first proper introduction to type matchups, which is probably the single most important combat mechanic in the game. Brock is here to teach you the most basic lesson in Pokemon battling. Super effective is good, and not effective is bad. In the case of Charmander, or 
those oddballs who instead got butter free with confusion, a different lesson is learned instead, being that special moves will deal more damage against enemies with high physical defense, and that using elemental moves are usually better than using normal ones. Now, the intended course of action here would be that players, upon seeing how little damage their normal moves deal to either the gym trainers or Brock's Geodude, would realize that their Pokemon are too weak and thus would leave to level up their Pokemon more. Eventually, the player would level up their starter enough for them to discover their first ever elemental move, being Vine Whip, Bubble, or Ember. At which point they will easily be able to defeat Brock, learning about super effective damage in the process. But here's the problem. Both kids and adult kids can be horribly stubborn. Despite visually seeing not very effective damage, there's a very real chance that some players will simply not take the hint to go back and train, and instead respond with simply hitting it really hard again. <laughs> Geodude's defense stat is still at a point where some stubborn players can beat it using resisted attacks. The designers needed a way to ensure that even the most thick-headed of players understand the importance of type matchups. And just as Team Rocket sought to create the ultimate Pokemon, the game's designers sought to create the ultimate tutorial lesson. And they succeeded. Enter Onyx. Now, just look at this absolute unit of a Pokemon. Compared to the birds, bugs, and rats, you know that this giant rock snake is on a whole other level from anything you fought before. When any player lays eyes on this thing for the first time, one message will come across loud and clear into your mind. This here is a real boss fight. But appearances aside, it's Onyx's stats which make it perfectly designed to drill the lesson on tight matchups into the most stubborn of players. The first and most important thing to explain is Onyx's hilarious defense stat. At a titanic 160, it's the second highest out of all Pokemon within Generation 1, only barely beaten out by Cloyster's 180 defense. This is a comically huge jump over the mere 100 defense possessed by Geodude, and this difference translates into a totally new experience for the player. Against Geodude, resisted scratch and tackles might still do some damage to dent its HP bar. But against Onyx, those same attacks deal almost nothing, a measly one damage. Onyx's HP bar will barely move. This re-emphasizes the aforementioned lesson of not effectiveness equals bad harder than before, and tells the player that trying to forcibly push through Brock really isn't a good idea. Of course, a lesson is only good if a player is able to have the time to learn it. This is why Onyx's attack is so low. At a measly 45, it's the single biggest reason as to why it's so terrible as a Pokemon. But this stat is also important by design. Box Onyx isn't actually supposed to KO you. This lesson about type effectiveness needs to be a natural realization by the player. If Onyx actually did damage, the player would end up with their Pokemon quickly defeated, and not understand why they lost or what they need to do differently to defeat it. So, Onyx is thus intentionally set up to be the ultimate punching bag, taking almost no damage from the opponent, but dealing just barely enough to pressure a player with screech and tackle. In the ensuing war of attrition, the player has all the time in the world for the realization that they need a new plan to slowly dawn upon them because their resisted tackles are not going to beat Onyx's own neutral damaging ones. As it turns out, dealing less damage than Caterpie isn't that big of a deal when the majority of Pokemon a player has, at that point of the game, have stats comparable to Caterpie. These stats are also why Brock's Onyx comes in with the move Bide. Bide forces the user to wait 2-3 to three turns, during which they cannot take any actions, and upon Bide ending, the user retaliates back for double the damage taken during that period. This move was removed as of Sword and Shield, due to being useless in the modern day. But back during Gen 1, it served an important purpose. This move was Brock's reward TM for defeating him, and was designed to guarantee Onyx will win against any opponent spamming type resistant moves, since Onyx will always outdamage them in a war of attrition. In order for Bite to work as intended, Onyx needs to move first, so that it can preemptively activate Bite and begin tanking hits. If it went second, players might instead be able to cheese its Bite strategy by timing their resisted hits, which is not the lesson that the designers want to teach. Therefore, its unusually high 70 speed stat 
is chosen to make it faster than the majority of Pokemon that the player can reasonably be expected to possess at that stage of the game, assuming they didn't excessively grind for EXP. The only exceptions are Butterfree, Beedrill, and if you play Yellow, Pikachu and Mankey. Because it is guaranteed to go first against most of the player's Pokemon, it can execute the bite strategy with reliable consistency. As a bonus, the player is likely very used to going first, so losing that turn priority only serves to reinforce the fact that this is a boss fight. This combination of defense, attack and speed result in Onyx being a boss that actively punishes any player from attempting to chip away at it with resisted hits. Trying to do so will just result in getting KO'd by Bide's counters, weak tackles, or at minimum being subject to a painfully long and drawn out battle. But there's an intended way to bypass all of this frustration. Just KO Onyx in one hit. What did I say, Brayden? This explains the last piece of the puzzle that is Onyx's unusual stat spirit. It's non-existent 35 HP and 30 special stats. These are chosen so that Onyx, which was invincible against all of your other Pokemon, will be instantly demolished by a starter in one hit. Rock ground typing to guarantee the KO against Vine Whip and Water Gun, respectively. Lastly, there is one final detail in the fight to force the player into this specific outcome. Trickier players will likely have learned about status effects from fighting Weedles in Viridian Forest, and so might try to poison Onyx instead and win via another path. To prevent this, Brock carries five full heals, ensuring Onyx remains poison proof and stays as an obstinate physical wall against chip damage. Now, despite how perfectly designed this boss fight is, it's not foolproof. While really tedious, it's still possible that a player could raise a Butterfree to take on Onyx, or simply grind enough levels on their Rattata and Pidgeys to win the War of Tackles. But those are still perfectly acceptable outcomes to the game's designers, because by defeating Onyx in such fashion, the player will have demonstrated either the adaptability to raise a variety of other Pokemon, or the sheer stubbornness to grind levels and brute force through any challenge proving they are capable of taking on anything the game has to throw at them. In fact, in Yellow, learning these two lessons are the only way to defeat Onyx, since you are stuck with a weak Pikachu for the entire game and need to learn how to compensate for that. The game's designers obviously preferred the raise different Pokemon option, since they actively went out of their way to redesign entire early sections of the game for this, by adding Mankey in Route 22 and changing the Nidoran's move pool to learn Double Kick at level 12. Notice that this is the exact same level as Onyx is in this game. Onyx's importance doesn't just end with Brock either. Unlike most of the other gym leader bosses, Onyx can be re-encountered as a wild Pokemon sometime later in the Rock Tunnel and Victory Road. This allows Onyx to serve as a benchmark of the player's progress, since they can now easily beat a much stronger version of that same boss from before, which reminds them of how far they've progressed since the start of the game. Capturing it also makes for an exciting moment for the player, since they now have the option to use that very awesome boss from before, and that experience encapsulates the entire founding idea of Pokemon as a franchise. You can catch and use every Pokemon, even the bosses. So yes, Onyx is undeniably a terrible Pokemon to use, and Game Freak is fully aware of that, seeing as how they buffed it with an evolution in the following game. But it needed to be terrible for the greater good of the game's health. If Brock and Onyx weren't there to teach us kids how to play Pokemon back in 1995, Pokemon Red and Blue might not have snowballed into the juggernaut of a franchise that it is today. So the next time you see an Onyx, I hope your opinion about it has changed a little bit and you'll come to appreciate it just a bit more than before. For it is arguably one of the greatest JRPG tutorial bosses in gaming history and more than deserving of the title of being one of the greatest Pokemon ever designed. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. How do you feel about it though? Would you agree or disagree? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and what kind of design-related oddities you'd like me to talk about next. Thanks, and see you next time.